Hi, welcome to Solution Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about colligative properties of solutions. Specifically, we're going to look at what are colligative properties, freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, and finally, molecular versus ionic compounds and the overall impact on boiling and freezing point. So what are colligative properties? The idea that freezing and boiling points of a solution change when solutes are added. The solutions referenced here are all aqueous solutions, meaning that everything we're talking about, the solvent is water. Remember, the normal boiling point of pure water is 100 degrees Celsius, and the normal freezing point of pure water is zero degrees Celsius. The amount of lowering of the freezing point or raising of the boiling point of water is not dependent, I repeat, is not dependent on the nature of the added particle. So one mole of any particle will have the same effect on freezing or boiling point, which means we could do one mole of sugar, we could do one mole of table salt, we could do one mole of pennies, of M&Ms, of you. The possibilities are endless. Let's now talk about freezing point depression. When any chemical salt, such as sodium chloride or calcium chloride, is added to water, the freezing point of the water will decrease. So for example, salting the roads in the winter time, which in our area where we live is very, very common. The added salt lowers the freezing point and helps to prevent the snow or ice from refreezing. Boiling point elevation. The presence of a non-volatile, meaning that it's not going to evaporate very quickly. Solute in a given solvent, where again we're talking about water, creates a solution with a boiling point temperature that is higher than the boiling point temperature of the solvent. So for example, antifreeze, which is also known as ethylene glycol. A solute, in other words, antifreeze, added to water, which is our solvent, to create a solution, antifreeze and water, that has a higher boiling point than the boiling point of the pure solvent. In this case, we're talking about water. So what does this mean exactly? It means in your car, you have a radiator, and that radiator prevents your car from overheating. We don't add pure water to the radiator. Instead, we add antifreeze that is added to water that prevents your car from overheating. So the addition of antifreeze prevents your car from overheating and breaking down on the side of the road, and at the same time, during the winter time, prevents the water in your car from freezing, because you really don't want a block of ice in your car. That would be known as a bad thing. So remember, a sample of pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Molecular versus ionic compounds and the effects on colligative properties. When one mole of sugar, a molecular substance, is dissolved in water, one mole of particles is produced in solution. So here we have some examples of sugar cubes. We add them to water. And as a result, as you can see to the image to the right, you can see the sugar particles represented as these hexagonal shapes interacting with the water molecules. But what you don't see is any charged particles being formed. So the sugar cube dissolves and just becomes individual molecules of sugar surrounded by water molecules. Molecular versus ionic compounds and the effect on colligative properties. When one mole of an ionic substance is dissolved in water, the results will be different. The ionic substance separates into individual ions. So for example, sodium chloride as a solid dissolved in water will break down into sodium ions and chloride ions, which are mobile charged particles. We can think about this as one mole of sodium chloride dissolved in water will form one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions. Thus, one mole of sodium chloride produces two moles of particles and will depress the freezing point of water twice as much as the mole of sugar. The greater the number of ions, the greater the effect on the freezing and boiling point of the solvent. 
And we talk specifically here about ions because we're going to be referencing a lot of our examples in terms of ionic compounds and the number of ions produced when dissolved in water. So for example, what ionic solid below will have the greater effect on the boiling and freezing point of water? One mole of KCl or one mole of SrCl2. So what I'd like you to do is stop, think about what your answer would be, write it down, and check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. One mole of KCl is going to break down into one mole of K plus one ions and one mole of Cl minus one ions. One mole of SrCl2, so let's write SrCl2, that's going to break down into one mole of strontium ions, so Sr plus two, and two moles of chloride ions. So now what we think to ourselves is, well, what's the total impact? How many moles of ions do we have in solution? With the KCl, we only have one mole of K plus one and one mole of Cl minus one for a total here of two moles. But if we look at SrCl2, we can see that we have one mole of strontium ions but two moles of chloride ions. Therefore, we have a total of three moles of ions in solution. Therefore, the SrCl2 would have a greater impact on lowering the freezing point and raising the boiling point of our solvent. So what did you learn? We answered the question, what are colligative properties? We talked a little bit about freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, and finally, molecular versus ionic compounds and the impact on boiling and freezing point. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.